Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Our guests today, including Ross Tucker and J.P. Barry, who's standing by, are sponsored by Basant Motors. Basant Motors is turning the big 3-0. They had the big event uh, yesterday, which Rick hosted, and they are ready to celebrate with some amazing deals. Find out more at basantmotors.com. Uh, the extensions for Quinn Hughes and Elias Pedersen with the Canucks were announced officially yesterday. Here to talk about that from CAA hockey agent J.P. Barry. He's becoming a regular, by the way. How are you, yeah. sir? <laughs> Very good. How are you guys? Good, good. The question that a lot of people are asking, J.P., what took so long? You know, I, I, I think we really did all look for trying to do longer-term deals, and, and that took a long time. And then I think generally the pressure of camp and, you know, figuring out the money together and looking at, other terms, you know, terms that we maybe didn't focus on before, um, that helped. Why the longer term for Quinn and the shorter term for Elias? Why did that make sense? Uh, I think we were trying hard to do a longer term for Elias uh, in the sort of five-year range. There was a lot of deals in the marketplace around five years. But, you know, for us, like, when you look at the comparable deals for him, there it was very difficult to do a five-year deal. So the three-year deal started to to make a lot more sense here as we got, you know, into camp. Uh, JP, if there was more money, if they had more cap space, could you have done long-term for both in your eyes? Yes, I think so, yeah. I mean, but that's the reality of uh, the reality of the cap. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes you can be patient to see if more cap space comes about. Um, but, you know, once we got to camp time, that, you know, that was the cap space. And, you know, we weren't able to do, you know, both long-term deals. But I think, you know, um, like I said, Elias uh, came around to seeing that a good three-year deal made sense like it has for a few of uh, a few younger players lately. Uh, JP, it was around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock on, uh, I believe, Thursday this story really took off. What was it about that day? What do you think it was that day? Because the week before and the week before it was all quiet. What do you think was the pressure point that got this thing moving real quick? I, I mean, I think it was just the fact that we started focusing on a different term and then and engaged fully to see if it could work out. I mean, it could have ended up, you know, both could have ended up with shorter terms also. But at the end of the day, with the cap room available, it looks like, a you know, a three-year for Elias and a six for Quinn made the most sense with what was on the table. JP, let's go back in the summer with Elias Pettersson's comments to the Swedish media about, I want to be on a winner. I got to win. I got to win. I don't want to be losing, you know, throughout my National Hockey League career. What did you think about those comments when he said them in Sweden, JP? Do you want your player to say that I want to lose and well, I'm happy that's losing it. in Vancouver? Or... Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but not every, not every player comes out like that during a negotiation time too, JP. Well, that's what he wants. I mean, he believes in himself. I mean, he's a confident player, and he wants to, you know, help the team get to the next level. He he likes it in Vancouver. He he wants to stay there, and he wants to win. I don't think there's – I think those are things that all are aligned, and, you know, this team has to take some steps to get there. What's it like negotiating with Jim Benning? Um, I'm, I mean – Jim's, Jim's very good. Him and Chris Gear worked side by side on this from the beginning. And, uh, I mean, you know, it was a difficult negotiation. The cap has made a lot of these recent negotiations difficult. It's no different than I went through it last year with uh, Matthew Barzal and Lou Lamarillo. I mean, Lou had to open up cap room really during camp to, to get even a three-year done. So, you know, the cap makes these, some of these negotiations really difficult at this stage. Like, not every team has cap room to sign high-end players. What are the pros and cons, JP, of uh, dealing with two RFA teammates at the same time, trying to get an extensions done? Um, I think I think um, the pros are. I mean, these guys know each other really well, so they're discussing it together. They're discussing all the reality of the amount of money that's on the table and what makes sense. So there was, you know, really open conversations between all of us, and I think that helps. What can you tell us about uh, your client's fitness? 
they worked hard. I mean, I know that uh, we got great reports on both. I mean, Quinn's always uh, stayed on the ice uh, throughout the whole summer, and Elias was on uh, most of the summer also because he wanted to mm-hmm. rehab from his injury. And then I got uh, constant videos of uh, our staff. We're, we're bag skating them in Michigan, and um, if anybody's been on the ice with the, on the ice with Jim Hughes, um, Quinn's dad and he uh, and his you know his people in Michigan, they I'm sure they skated him just as hard as any NHL camp. Jim likes to push the envelope uh, with preparations. You were bag skating him in Michigan. That's that. No, no city likes bag skates more than Vancouver. JP, the media. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you about another client of yours, a former Vancouver Canucks who is having a good preseason, JP, and that's Louis Erickson. Talk a little bit about oh. uh, how he's doing right there right now. <laughs> I know you just want to stir it up, don't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> Canucks Twitter is saying he's doing really well. He's we got we two make JP th- talk about Louis every time he's on. You have to talk about Louis. <laughs> Come on, did JP. I tell, yeah, did I ever say that Louis wasn't a capable player? I mean, yeah. it, it didn't work for him in Vancouver. He didn't get, you know, it didn't sink with either with. You know, I mean, he's a good player. I he, I think every time he stepped away from the team and played for Team Sweden, he played really well. So it's not really surprising he takes care of himself. And, you know, I hope he has a big bounce back year. He wants to get a 1,000 games, and he wants to show people before his career is over that, you know, the last three or four years were a, a blip, I guess, unfortunately. Uh, JP, the Sedin twins, uh, Any? can you give us an update on how they like uh, – Life and management, uh, they seem to be pretty active. Uh, every practice, every game at the rink all the time. You know, I left them alone here for the last month as we were in the negotiations. Right, yeah. and I'll probably check back this week. I just felt it was better to let them do their thing on the team side. So, I, you know, I, I'll, uh, I'll find out how things have been going here soon. JP, um, I don't know how much you can say, but Jack Eichel is also a CAA client. What's in his uh, immediate future? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, Pat and uh, myself and our whole staff are just you know, doing as much work as we can on the medical side and getting as many opinions as possible and sharing that with the team and trying to get both sides talking to each other about solutions and, you know, the PAs helped out. So, I mean, we're just going to have to keep grinding on this and, and seeing if we can have a breakthrough on, on what's a really, really difficult uh, situation. What's his state of mind like right now, JP? I mean, I think he's as as he should be. He's frustrated and he wants yeah. to get moving. So yeah, we gotta, you know, we gotta move forward. It's a player's health, and he needs, to, you know, we feel he needs treatment um, in a short, you know, a short course. And hopefully, it's you know, get moving on this as soon as possible. Thanks for this, sir. Short notice. Appreciate it again. We'll have you on next week. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Talk soon.